morning everybody and welcome to another Revs Rural service. Revs Rural is the ministry team that puts together these videos in the North Sevenside Benefits. Before we begin today's service, I would like to say a big thank you to everyone who contributes to make these services. Please keep sending me your photos, your video clips, your music, because everything that you send helps to make Sunday a really, really special day. This week, I would like to say a big thank you to Elena, who sent some wonderful photos of her doing last week's Praying Hands Junior Church activity. I also told you last week that uh, I've been watching the fitness instructor Joe Wicks on YouTube every day, Monday to Friday, he tells us how to keep fit by doing all sorts of exercises. And I thought maybe we could do something special on a Sunday with Christian action songs that would help us to keep fit. This week, Gina has contributed the actions to the Wren Collective My Lighthouse song, one of the favourites of the Refresh group who meets in church on a Saturday evening. In the silence you won't let go In the questions your truth will hold Your great love will lead me through You are the peace in my troubled sea world You are the peace in my troubled sea My lighthouse, my lighthouse Trusting in the darkness I will follow you, my lighthouse, my lighthouse, trusting in the promise, you will carry me safe to shore, safe to shore, safe to shore, safe to shore. The Lord be with you. The theme of today's service is the road to Emmaus. But before we begin the service, I'd like us to listen to this short blog by Janet all about Christian Aid. Christian Aid Week is from the 10th to the 16th of May. Christian Aid would like us to consider the fact that coronavirus does not just affect the UK. It is a global pandemic and we're called all to give generously. Christians aim to become more like Jesus. We should long to show our love for God and for our neighbours by supporting each other. Some of that support needs to be financial. I'm sure all of our local churches have fundraising activities. My church, St Mary's Olverston, has had a great tradition of fundraising and in recent years we have selected two charities every two years. Home and Away charities, a local charity and one in a different country. This year we wanted not to forget those in other countries. We've become very good at thinking locally, but we need to not forget to think globally as well. There are many who are struggling far more than we are with this wretched virus. They live in more crowded situations they cannot isolate. They are poorer. Some don't have access to good running water, let alone oxygen supplies, ventilators, PPE. What can we do to help? Christian Aid is coming up on the, in, it's a week of Christian Aid and it's from 10th to the 16th of May. And this year, Vicar David suggested we could think in terms of wheelbarrows. Christian Aid used the idea of a wheelbarrow to ask people to donate a specific reasonable sum of money, £30. Each £30 could provide a family with hygiene kits and safe water. Or a wheelbarrow. <laughs> I bet you're spending your time out in the garden. 
like a lot of us. We've been blessed with wonderful weather and our gardens have never looked so good. But next time you get out the wheelbarrow, would you consider giving away 30 quid so that one of our more distant neighbours could have one too? Of course, not all the money we give will be used to buy wheelbarrows. There are many other pressing needs. Hygiene kits and safe water are prime at the moment. But wheelbarrows is a useful way to think of an amount of money to give. It's a symbol. How many wheelbarrows can we manage between us? Walk with him, come talk with him, come feast with him, come worship Jesus, our risen Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ. were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognising him. And he said to them, What were you discussing with each other whilst you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. And then one of them, whose name was Cle Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know these things that have taken place there in these days? Jesus asked them, what things? About Jesus of Nazareth. We hoped he could be Israel's long for king, but they put him to death on Friday. But then some of our women went to visit the grey stone, and they said an angel had taken the body, and somehow he was alive. Why are you so puzzled? Do you not know that the prophet said this would happen? And he began to explain to them. They came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on, but they urged him strongly saying, stay with us because it's almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went to go and stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized Jesus and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning with, within us while he was talking to us on the road? While he was opening the scriptures to us, the same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven 
and their compassions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he was appearing to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he had been made made known to them in the breaking of the bread. So on the way to Emmaus, Jesus had a talk with those disciples and he explained how all throughout the Old Testament there were clues hidden for him, a bit like in the Harry Potter books, when you read the first six books and little clues are dropped throughout them and in the seventh book it all becomes clear what it's all about and it's the same in the old testament there were clues dropped about jesus all the way through and god's plan to save the world and jesus explained to the disciples on the way to emmaus what that was all about we're going to do a craft now it's just a really simple one the idea being that it's about mysteries that are revealed so i have with me some plain paper and a wax crayon. Actually, we don't have any crayons, so I've used a birthday candle because it's wax and it still works. And I'm going to write on my piece of paper a Bible message. And then I'm going to take some paint and make sure it's quite well watered down. And then I'm going to spread my watered down paint over the sheet of paper. It really does have to be quite well watered. And as we go across the paper with the paint and the paintbrush, the message that I've written will be revealed, much as Jesus's message is revealed in the Old Testament and properly made known to us in the New. So as I go across the paper, with my watered down paint, my hidden message is revealed. But my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the works thy hand has made, I see the stars. I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Saviour God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Saviour God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. When through the woods and forest glades I wander, and hear the birds sing sweetly in the trees, when I look down from lofty mountains grandeur and hear the brook and feel the gentle breeze then sings my soul my saviour god to thee how great thou art how great thou art then sings my soul my saviour god to thee how great thou art, how great thou art. And when I think that God, his Son not sparing, sent him to die, I scarce can take it in, that on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Saviour God, to thee, How great thou art, how great thou art. 
Then sings my soul, my Saviour God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. When Christ shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home, what joy shall fill my heart. Then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim, my God, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Saviour God, to At this point in our service, we take a little time out to reflect upon the events of the past week. The things we did, the things we did not, and our inconsidered thoughts. Let us pray. Lord, as we travel the journey of life, sometimes we are sad and discouraged and don't recognise your presence. Forgive us and help us, loving God. As we travel through new experiences, sometimes we are confused and afraid and forget to look for you among the unfamiliar. Forgive us and help us, loving God. As we meet new people, some who have different ideas and views from our own, some who challenge and make us feel uncomfortable, we fail to see you at work in them. Forgive us and help us, loving God. As we listen to old familiar Bible stories, sometimes we neglect to look for new opportunities among the well-known words. Forgive us and help us, loving God. As we share food at your table, eating bread as a symbol of Jesus' body, Drinking wine as a sign of his blood, we do not go out with joy in our hearts. Forgive us and help us, loving God. When we have opportunities to share good news, we gossip and discourage. When we have new ways of service before us, we waste time and make up excuses. Forgive us and help us, loving God. When we come before our Lord and confess our sin, God forgives us. We hear then God's word of grace, our sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. There's a Bert Bacharach Cal David song written for Whitney Houston in 1968 called Do You Know the Way to San Jose? This includes the words, I may go wrong and lose my way, I'm going back to find some peace of mind. This morning I want to ask, do you know the way to Emmaus? Our Gospel reading records two of Jesus' followers walking the seven miles from Jerusalem to Emmaus. Suddenly Jesus joins them, but something prevented them from recognising him. Jesus spoke to them and asked what they were discussing. One of the two, Cleophas was astonished. You must be the only visitor in Jerusalem who hasn't heard of the things that have happened there recently. Jesus asked them, what things? Not knowing to whom they were talking, the two then told him about the prophet Jesus, their hopes that he would redeem Israel, how he had suffered crucifixion, and how some women believers had told them that he was not dead, but alive. Still, they did not recognise him. Many of us are just like that. 
We know Jesus in our heads, but not in our hearts. We know about him, we talk about him. We have ideas and information about him that we have received, but who he really is comes from personal revelation through prayer. Jesus then explained clearly to the travellers all that the Hebrew scriptures had prophesied about the Messiah. When they reached Emmaus, he broke bread at supper with them. Their eyes were opened and they finally recognised him as truly alive. But he vanished from their sight. Overjoyed, they rushed back to Jerusalem to share the news. How often have you attended a wedding, funeral or reunion, or even been at an airport or in the street of a strange town, only to be greeted by someone who you once knew but fail to recognise. They've aged, changed their hairstyle, grown a beard, or are just in an unfamiliar context. Then a gesture strikes a chord and recognition follows. Why, you might ask, didn't Jesus reveal himself straight away? Wouldn't it have been kinder to put Cleophas and his friend out of their misery and despair at the outset? They were searching for the truth when truth was walking alongside them. However, they needed to recognise Jesus, not just as their beloved leader, but as the Messiah foretold in Scripture. Because they were prevented from recognising the risen Jesus immediately, in the end, it cemented their faith. Like Cleophas and his friend, many things prevent us from recognising the hand of God upon our lives. There are times when we, like the two disciples, are full of head knowledge and even enjoy fellowship with other believers, but we do not acknowledge Jesus fully in our hearts. Jesus re re revealed himself personally to these two men. They were not part of the Twelve, nor were they mentioned in the Gospels prior to this account. They were merely walking despondently home to Emmaus. Cleophas and his companion came to recognise Jesus through his interpreting the scriptures and his breaking of the bread. Today, he is still made known to us through the preaching of the Gospel and the Eucharist. There may well be times when we go wrong or lose our way in life, but if in prayerful trust we walk the way to Emmaus, Jesus will walk beside us and we will find peace of mind. Call it for this, the third Sunday of Easter. Almighty Father, who in your great mercy gladden the disciples with the sight of the risen Lord, give us such knowledge of his presence with us that we may be strengthened and sustained by his risen life and serve you continually in righteousness and truth. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and for ever. Amen. Walk with us, Lord, on our journey of faith, both as individuals and as the Church of God. Open up to us the truths you long for us to understand and inspire all who teach and encourage. Equip us all to pass on the good news of Easter. Lord God, abide with us. Walk with us, Lord, down the quieter streets of our cities, towns and villages. Meet all those who are curious, searching or moving in the wrong direction. Let your presence be sought and recognised in all the world. Lord God, abide with us. Walk with us, Lord, in our life journeys, guiding, teaching and correcting us as we learn the lessons of loving in our homes, our work and our communities. Lord God, abide with us. Walk with us, Lord, through the times of suffering and pain, alerting us to one another's needs and providing for us in whatever ways are best for us. Help us to trust you through the dark times. Breathe new life and hope into
to those who are close to despair. Lord God, abide with us. Walk with us, Lord, through the valley of death. May our love and prayer support those who walk that journey today. Draw close to them and welcome them into the joy of heaven. Lord God, abide with us. Lord, we thank you for walking with us wherever we travel. We thank you that you are indeed real and alive every step of the way. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. ago and suddenly looked at God's wonderful world with totally different eyes, I began to notice light, colour, shape, texture, continuity, change, beauty and majesty. Appreciation grew as my paintings developed in style and format. I paint in oils with my fingers and a palette knife, so I'm totally immersed in the painting. I also paint from my heart, not my head. I believe my faith has had a great deal to do with this, about what I see and the interpretation. I'm always aware of a creator God, a force greater than me, where I am dwarfed by my subjects, the magnificent wild sea, the sun, still waters on a summer's day, the grandeur of mountains, the shape of changing clouds and sky, light on water. Painting is a journey with a long way to travel. At times of sadness and stress, I find I cannot paint, but the road is always there. It is such a joy when someone relates emotionally or spiritually to one of my paintings, glimpsing something beyond the canvas. This is the painting I have been working on during the loneliness of isolation lockdown. The subject was chosen before the pandemic, but I think it reflects the situation now. It was a fine summer's day on the River Severn, when suddenly a giant storm cloud from nowhere turned the sky and the river black. But behind that cloud, the light of the sun still shone. I think that is the same for me. A number of times over the last 18 months, I am in the midst of sudden darkness. However, I hold on to the promise that Jesus, the light of the world, is always there. He may be hidden from view and difficult to see, but if I know he's there, I have the hope and knowledge that I am never alone and that all will be well. So let's affirm our faith together. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is made. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with love. 
We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. A brief update of two ways that Arveston is coping with the lockdown. We have a rotor system with six PCC reps ringing over 50 households each week to keep in touch and offer support to our church members and others connected to St Helens. This has been a rewarding task. People say they appreciate the cause and it's good to have a friendly chat when you're alone. An impressive response to the crisis came from one of our young villagers who set up the Alveston Community Action Group as the lockdown began. Facebook helped to recruit lots of young people and now there is a steward for each road to do shopping etc for anyone who is self-isolating. Thank God for all those who are trying to ease problems caused by COVID-19. Now would you please join with us as Brian and I say the traditional version of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I am sure we all agree that we are most fortunate to live in this beautiful rural area and to be able to sit in our gardens which offer so much at the moment and of course to go for country walks. I have chosen this poem by Henry Van Dyke because I'm hoping it will express some of our feelings at this difficult time. God of the Open Air Thou who hast made thy dwelling fair, with flowers beneath, above with starry lights, and set thine altars everywhere, on mountain heights, in woodlands dim with many a dream, in valleys bright with springs, and on the curving capes of every stream. Thou who hast taken to thyself the wings of morning to abide upon the secret places of the sea and on the far islands where the tide visits the beauty of untrodden shores waiting for worshippers to come to thee in thy great out of doors. To thee I turn, to thee I make my prayer, God of the open air. Seeking for thee, the heart of man, lonely and longing ran in that first solitary hour when the mysterious power to know and love the wonder of the morn was breathed within him and his soul was born. And thou didst meet thy child, not in some hidden shrine, but in the freedom of the garden wild and take his hand in thine. And there all day long in paradise he walked, and in the cool of the evening with thee talked. These are the gifts I ask of thee, spirit serene, strength for the daily task, courage to face the road, good cheer to help me bear the traveller's load, and for the hours of rest that come between, an inward joy in all things heard and seen. These are the sins I fain would have thee take away, malice and cold disdain, hot anger, sullen hate, scorn of the lowly, envy of the great, and discontent that casts a shadow grey on all the brightness of the common day. These are the things I prize and hold of dearest worth. Light of the sapphire skies, peace of the silent hills, shelter of forests, comfort of the grass, music of birds, 
murmur of little rills, shadow of clouds that swiftly pass, and after showers, the smell of flowers and the good brown earth. And best of all, along the way, friendship and mirth. So let me keep these treasures of the humble heart in true possession, owning them by love. And when at last I can no longer move among them freely, but must part from the green fields and from the waters clear, let me not creep into some darkened room and hide from all that makes the world so bright and dear, but throw the windows wide to welcome in the light. And while I clasp a well-beloved hand, let me once more have sight of the deep sky and the far smiling land. Then gently fall on sleep and breathe my body back to nature's care my spirit out to thee, God of the open air. The world is suffering, but it's always the case that in times of hardship, kindness to one's fellow human beings always emerges. And it's equally true in Alveston Parish. We're very blessed with um, three very vital businesses uh, we have Origin Butchers, uh, the Crusty Loaf and um, Olverson Village Stores. And we thank all the owners of those businesses and the people who work in them. We really are very grateful. And then there are the village volunteers. These are the people led by Angela Young and Claire Evans, who organise the helpers to get provisions and medicine and newspapers for those people who are isolated in their homes and can't get out. And they'll even walk um, your dog for you. So we thank each and every one of those people. And I'd like to say that civic pride and community spirit will see us through this crisis. So finally, spare a thought for all the lonely people, those who are unable to leave their houses, perhaps with no family, no friends, no one to support them, no neighbours even. We need to look out for them. So now I think it's time for the grace. So shall we say the grace together? May, May the, the grace, grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love, love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, Spirit be, be with, with us all, all now, now and, and evermore. evermore. Amen. Amen. <laughs> So... Oh. 